All right, guys, I just wanted to make an update here. As you can see, my garage is empty. No Mustang to be found. Uh, basically, I took it to the Mustang shop up here, and uh, they're going to do some work for me, some stuff that, uh, you know, I just didn't feel comfortable doing. I wanted to make make sure that the car's roadworthy, so, you know, they're going to do some things like, you know, finish getting the exhaust on and, uh you know, set the TV cable, check the timing, get the e-brake working. You know, I made a whole list about 10 or 12 things that they're going to go over and do. So, so you know, so, some things you can do, but sometimes you just got to get the professionals in here, you know, and to, you know, to, to basically make sure everything's okay. Now, say, you know, saying that, uh, when I went to do the American Wire Harness in this vehicle, I got quoted anywhere between four and $6,000. To have it installed that was you know not including the price of the wiring harness which was about no oh, what six hundred dollars or something like that so i did all that install myself and i saved that money yeah it did take me four to six weeks because i work a lot of hours and then you know on the weekends whenever i could i'd get out there and one wire at a time trace it find out where it went and it wasn't that difficult once you get the hang of it it's just time consuming so I did save a lot of money there, uh, but I still, in the in the end, uh, you know, my front turn or parking light turn signals work fine, headlights work fine, but my rear turn lights and my rear backup lights were not working. I think it's just a grounding issue or a bulb issue. So I'm just going to have them take a look at that. I don't think it was anything I did. I double quadruple checked the. Uh, instructions even after I was having the issue so I think it's going to be a simple grounding issue probably need some new housings because the ones that are on there were really old so you know they, you can save yourself a lot of money by just diving in and doing it if you make a mistake or something needs to be changed then you know just change it so hopefully when I get it back from the Mustang shop here hopefully within a week or two uh, then I'll be ready to take this thing to paint uh you know hang and go from there now i do have my pony interior here you can see these seats here uh which are kind of this i don't know light blue or whatever and uh, you can kind of see here that's kind of light blue this one here is kind of ripped down in here so i think what i've decided to do since i now know the color of it i'm thinking about changing the whole interior color of the car to black uh they just don't make this pony interior with the color i'm going to paint the car they don't make this pony interior which you can see right here it's got the nice little ponies they're running around they just don't make it in the dark blue and i really really would like it if they did now i could go back to the standard interior which is basically this type all the way down it doesn't have all that on there and I could get it in a dark blue, but then I'm going back to a standard uh, type deluxe uh, upholstery, which I don't know that I want to do that. I mean, they sell kits out there. They're dark blue. I love them. I just wish that they would do them in this pony interior, which they don't. I guess I could try to dye these, but, you know, when you can buy a whole new kit for relatively inexpensive to put on there, uh, I might just go all black. So me and my wife have been talking about it. She's on board, uh, you know, with either way. So, we, you know, we got a few weeks to decide on that. So uh, I just wanted to make a little update now that I've actually got the car out of here. Uh, I will be able to get in here and finally I'm going to straighten up this garage so it's presentable. I got stuff everywhere. So uh, that's just a little update on the 65 Mustang Fastback Rebuild.